Well, it's so exciting to be uh, talking uh, Southern Mallee Giants again after uh, last year and uh, the uh, fella that knows so much about this club and how it uh, has been uh, developed since it's come across from Mallee football then into the district and now into Wimmera is their coach, Coleman Shack. He joins me. G'day, Coleman. How are you? Yeah, going well. Thanks, Flo, man. Uh, good to be on board this year. Looking forward to it. Oh, we're looking forward to it too. And, of course, uh, we'll, we'll say something about uh, the um, former guest on here, uh, the great Ross Brown. Uh, um, apparently, uh, Brownie um, uh, was um, given his marching orders because the Flo man here, he just couldn't take that yellow jumper that he wears to Richmond games anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, funny you say that, Brownie. Uh, he tried to tell me that he was... Um, given up this year he's uh retiring but i've heard that he's uh been given the flick from numerous sources so i don't know what's going on there <laughs> i reckon it could have something to do with uh, he and i um, being on separate ledges when richmond had beat the crows in the 2017 afl grand final it might have something to do with that <laughs> yeah i'd say you probably probably right there um <laughs> No, I know he. Uh, I know he went to the footy last week against Sydney, so that would have been a long uh, trip home back from the big smoke after that. That's for sure. Yeah, apparently he had to go and watch a Carlton game with his wife, so that would have been an even longer day. <laughs> 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 hey, look. Great to talk with you about to country football, though. And look, uh, it's been tough uh, not playing last year. I'm going to ask you uh, from the outset. We're so excited about being back playing, and of course, you guys have got to wait till uh, the 24th to get your first outing. But what's it like, Coleman? Uh, the circumstances around the club, around Bueller and uh, Hopeton areas, uh, just not playing last year. I spot on, boy, man. It um. It is very exciting. I, don't, I think, I suppose, all the community realises how important it was, um, just community sport, um, the social side of things and, and the competitive side of things, just bringing, bringing everyone together, um, um, yeah, from, from all ages, I suppose. There's good, good numbers coming to training and, and just, yeah, you just didn't get to catch up um, with the people around your area um, without that connection of community sport, I suppose. Yeah, I tell you what, the connection uh, and having uh, something for the kids and then the girls and the guys and th- then afterwards at the club, uh, organising social events, I mean, all of that went in 2020. But, gee, in 2019 and 2018 in Wimmera football, after you won in 2017 over in district um, with a premiership there, suddenly two runners-up in Wimmera. How, how do you, I guess, bring the team back and uh, what do you do to say to them after missing last year um, are we going to come out are we going to be competitive enough can we as a club the uh, Southern Mallee Giants can we win the flag in Wimmera football in 2021 um, definitely a driver um, you know the, the ultimate goal that every team's aim for is premiership but I think just you know after after the year off there's a couple of younger younger boys coming through and we've got a few new uh, local faces coming back and I think um, that combined with just you know, getting the best out of, you know, a few of us um, older players, getting the best out of the younger players as well as getting our best out of each other. That that just sort of naturally just drives you um, throughout the pre-season um, to train hard. And, yeah, I just know myself, I've, I've just got a, yeah, just a um, passion as well as a couple of other old fellas of just developing those, um, the younger age group. And uh, that's exciting. And, you know, they're, they're taking us um, to places uh, beyond this year. So, um, yeah, that's, they're the main drivers um, to, to get success um, and play some good footy this year. Yeah, certainly uh, that's going to be exciting. Hey, tell me about Luke Marnie. He was with the club back, I reckon, when you won the premiership in the Horsham District League. He's come back from Camperdown. And he's going to take on the coaching role with you. And now uh, with that, uh, does that give you a bit more freedom on the field to come and for yourself to uh, play the game that you want to play and uh, have somebody support you in the coaching role? Yeah, so, yeah, for starters, that's absolutely um, privilege to have Luke Marnie um, coming back to the club. Um, I know he's a very well liked figure on and off the field. He gets along with all the um, all the uh, older fellas, um, and he's got a fair few connections after obviously spending a couple of years with us while we're in the district league. So, um, and to him to take on coaching, yeah, we're we're very lucky. He's, he's um, got some great knowledge on the game, and um, he's already passed um, a lot of that on, and and that that definitely will give us um, some yeah some different different views and different options having um, both of us um, 
in that role, for sure. What about uh, some of the recruits? I know that uh, Brock Orville, who was a star for uh, Bueller in years gone by, uh, went over to Charlton uh, and played over there. I know that he's coming back. Jack Landrigan, another Hopeton boy that uh, went over to Charlton. I hear that he's coming back. Tell us about those two. And maybe Lucas Cook, too, another of the young fellas that is a, a junior at the club is coming back to the club this year. Local fellas coming back is, yeah, they're definitely worth their weight in gold, obviously. Um, not only with the point system being one-pointers, but just having local faces back around the club. I think that draws... Um, and then, yeah, obviously, they're big names as well with um, Lucas and, and Brock and also Jack. So, um, just, yeah, it brings plenty of excitement for what they can bring on the field and also just um, draws people through the gates as well, having having those sort of names um, in, and, in and around the club. So, yeah, we're, yeah, we're very lucky, lucky to have those boys back, back on the team. I reckon you are now. Tell me, when you had the program organised and you got the first round by, which is the 17th of April, the clubs get going there with the Ararat and Stall having already played, Stall winning that match by 15-19 to 5-2 over the Rats. But you get to have the bye that week and come out on the um, the April the 24th. I hear the noise in the background that they're uh, coach, and I reckon it might just be that you're getting your air seeding job done before the start of the footy season. Yeah, he's caught me out here, fine man, sitting on the uh, air seater at the moment. There's a few starting to crank up um, around the area, so uh, yeah, it'll be full noise. It might just give us a bit of extra time to get the crop in before the footy starts, that's for sure. <laughs> might be why Brownie's not on the radio too, because he's probably out on his air seater too over the over there near Hope Vale. No, I'd say Bit Brownie's uh, holidaying somewhere at the moment, I reckon. <laughs> Yeah, down by the lake at Hopeton Lake, but uh, with a speedboat, I'd say, on a pretty good weekend that it's going to be. Hey, look, great to have you on board, Carlman Shack, um, the coach of the Southern Mallee Giants. Um, through the uh, reports next week, we'll obviously uh, have a look at some of the junior grades and some of the players through um, that side of the things uh, that are happening at the Giants and also covering off on uh, then your first game the following week. But uh, terrific to hear your voice, and we'll look forward to your comments throughout the season. Now, looking forward to the season ahead. Bye, man. Thanks for having me on.